video, we're talking about two of the most effective street fight self-defense or personal protection self-defense tools that you can have. Particularly, or specifically, we're talking about the Japanese Joe or the medium-sized staff and the walking cane or the self-defense cane. We're going to talk about how they're similar, how they're very different. This is a discussion. I want to hear what you think. I want to see it in the comments below. Add, tell me I'm right, tell me I'm wrong, tell me you think about it in a different way, but add to the discussion. This is a discussion between you and between me. So we're talking about the Joe first. We're gonna go back and forth. The first thing I like about the Joe is that you get distance between you and the threat. Let's say they have a knife. They have something in their hand that they can stick into you over and over again, and you wanna create as much distance as possible. Or you just don't want them coming in, throwing that big haymaker, smashing your face, breaking your glasses. You have the stick you can put between you and them. So on the Joe, there are many ways that people carry it. You can carry it just like you would a big stick. And, you, and I see this. I see guys in my neighborhood walking their little dogs, and the guy's got a stick. And I asked him, or my wife asked him, why are you carrying that stick? He said there was another dog in the neighborhood, went after his dog, he tried to separate him, bit him cut his hand up, had to get tested, so now he carries a stick. It's that simple, right? And it's about the length of a Joe. Now, for you, carrying the Joe or training with the Joe, you're gonna think about putting it between you and the threat, and the first thing that you can do is just point your thumb at the threat. That puts it into the backhand, and then the second thing, create distance. Just that pull cue strike, right? From here, you're walking, here comes the threat, and then now you have distance. So reach, reach is the first thing I like about the Joe, you have this basic strike here. You can strike down coming this way. It turns into almost like a sword, like a Japanese sword or even a baseball bat. So you have that versatility, but the first thing that I like about this weapon is that length. It gives me that length advantage. You now have to get around the stick. If you wanna get in and you wanna hurt me, you wanna do something to me or destroy my eyes or my throat, my ability to live, my dignity, you wanna take something from me, you gotta get around my stick first. That brings me back to the other weapon, which is the martial arts cane. And twirling the cane, spinning the joe, are just ways to improve your cardiovascular fitness to condition yourself for that self-defense fight. So we have the cane, and it's the same thing. I have the length. Now it's not the same length. The joe is a much longer weapon. So you can see that, so in that case, the Joe is superior for creating distance between me and the threat, increasing my reach, or reach, increasing my reach, and it's a force multiplier. That Joe is heavy, that Joe is a really hard wood, and that thing hits extremely hard. I'll show you just from there, you can imagine, and that's bending that bag in half and putting a dent in it, that going into somebody's ribs, someone's hand with a knife, this is extremely effective, and increases my reach dramatically. Let me know what you think. Put some comments in the, uh, the section below. Now, the cane also has the same benefit, but maybe not as much, and you can hear it's a higher pitched sound. Listen to the thud, and listen to the high pitch. It's a different sound because it's different material. Now, the advantage here, in addition to the reach, is that you have speed. You can move the Joe very quickly, right? With those same, same strikes coming in this way around the body, it's still gonna move extremely fast, but anytime your weapon is a little bit lighter, you're picking up speed. So now you have as an advantage to the cane, the walking cane or the self-defense cane, you can fight with that speed, that power, and it's more effective when you hold it with one hand when it comes to that strikes. That's because it's not as long. Can you strike with this heavy Joe? And I love this, I love the weight of this thing. But this is a two-handed weapon for the most point, or the most part. You can use one hand, obviously, but it's more effective when you have that other hand because of the length and the weight of that weapon, that uh, Joe, the Japanese Joe. So you're gonna need the second hand on it. Let me show you another way you can create distance between yourself and the threat. From here, taking it just to that backhand on the top, and now just jamming straight in. So let's say 
It's in your front hand. Here comes the threat. You simply put, pick it up like this. Think of the roof of a house. From here, just up, and it's, I missed it. He's <laughs> straight in. I missed it again. That's why you train. You're going to miss it a lot. So make sure when you train, you let your stuff move and let it swing. Don't stop it all the time, right? And that's good. That tells me I need to train more. But that's the idea. You pick this up, slam, straight in. You have that reach advantage, and you have two hands. So that's a lot of force. That's an advantage to the Joe. Speed, one hand ability, strike to devastate, to break bones with just one handed strikes, using that other hand, creating distance, maybe jabbing, storing a punch in their face. Maybe you're like a Kali Salat guy and you fight, F or girl, the FMA, the Filipino martial arts, you got a knife in that other hand, right? For self defense, for self defense. But that's advantage to the cane. The second advantage to the cane is this crook, this hook right here, that allows you to obviously reach in behind their head, pull them down, drive the elbow straight in as you're doing that. Hook them up, grab their hand, maybe they're going after somebody else, and you're an innocent bystander, or maybe it's someone in your family, or your, your, your kids, your wife, your significant other, your husband, and you're walking with your cane, you see the threat, they're going after them, you do a couple strikes, you reach out and you snatch them back. And you say, get away from my family. You have no right to take what belongs to me or injure, harm anything that belongs to me. Anything that threatens you, you threaten it back. You're gonna do that with your walking cane or your Japanese Joe. Now let's talk about uh, another really obvious thing. It's really, really important, okay? Uh, this thing you can carry with you everywhere you go. There's no place you're not allowed to take this. This is considered to be a medical device. And if you live in the United States, especially the Americans with Disability Act allows you to, uh, yeah, go for it. If you're done using it as a bow, but the Americans with Disability Act says that you can't ask me if you're law enforcement, if you are the guy, the, the security guard checking me into the bank, you can't say, hey man, can you show me where you need to use that? Where's your doctor's note? It doesn't exist. The law protects me, protects you and saying that you're allowed to carry this as long as it has this hook. It's gotta have the hook. As long as it has the hook, you're allowed to go into the bank, your kid's school, the business that has the sign on the door that says no guns allowed, you're still allowed to carry this in. You're allowed to carry this into the airport through TSA, through the security checkpoints, onto the plane, put it there on the floor right next to you so that you have it all the time on the train, on the bus, everywhere you go. Huge advantage to the cane. You know this is the obvious answer, right? You go walking up, not only does it look obvious, but you go walking up to the bank with your stick, you try to go through TSA at the airport, you try to go through checkpoint security at the airport, go into the city offices, and you've got this, there's absolutely no way. Good, good for you. Yeah, thank you, thank you for watching them, thank you for the feedback. Please put a lot of those comments in the comment section too, because not everybody can see the, um, the live chat later, but we can make this a conversation. This is a conversation between you and me. We're talking about two of the most effective self-defense tools, one being the cane, the other being the joke. This is still very effective. Think of this as a hiking stick, okay? Maybe it's not a, a martial arts looking uh, thin, skinny, shiny pole that you use all the time for training, and it's obvious that you're using that, and then you're walking down the street, Maybe it's a hiking stick. It looks like a hiking stick. It's got the little leather band around your wrist. It's made of that uh, gnarled uh, wood or burled wood, and it's all fancy and extremely strong. That's why I like them so much. And you're just minding your own business, and you're walking down the street. Now you have an option. Strike, right? You're walking down the street. Now you have an option. Strike, strike. I mean, there's a million things you can do with the Joe that translates immediately to both the seeing eye cane, the, those white canes, the people who have uh, uh, challenges with sight, they are also, it's about the same length. They can use that cane for self-defense to feel more confident, get out, and move around. You can use a hiking stick if you don't want to use your Joe. I always walked with my Joe. I didn't care. I'd still do it if I, <laughs> but I didn't have the other people around me who cared as much, but I would still do it, right? 
But I know, again, this is the advantage uh, Cain can't take this many, many places. This I can. Also, I can be driving in my car and have this sitting, and I do. I have one sitting of my everyday carry cane, which is a little, it's much harder than this. It, so it's kind of between this and the Joe, right? It's still fast, it still creates power, but it's gonna just break bones, shatter arms. They got that knife coming for self-defense. Knife's coming at me, break that hand right through, knock off their uh, operating system. They're out cold. You get away free. Let the cops come and scoop them up and stick them in the back of the, uh, the paddy wagon or the police car. Take them to jail where they belong, right? Creeps coming after you, trying to hurt you, trying to take things away from you, like your dignity, your, uh, your possessions, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your children, your wife, your husband, your significant other. You've got the cane. This is that, that's the whole purpose of this, right? But this, back to the advantage. And again, put your comments down below. What do you think the advantages are? The advantage is the law says they can't make you leave this back at home when you go, go to the airport. You don't have to leave this in the car when you walk into the county building to, to get your driver's license renewed. You're allowed to take this with you. And no one is allowed. It's your, human, it's your right. If you live here in this country, we have the most rights of anywhere in the world. You live in the United States, the Americans with Disability Act, you are allowed to take this anywhere you go, whether you use it for mobility or you use it for confidence, more confidence, more, um, more options for self-defense. That You don't have to prove that you need it. That's the point. You put it between you and the threat and you say, back up. I have every right to defend myself. Back up. And then big motions, basic strikes, right? Things that work. You can do the joint locks, the pressure points, the takedowns, you can do all that stuff, but you don't need them when we're talking about just basic, practical, does it work every single day, self-defense, we're talking about fight, get behind your stick, rake it across their face, smash like a rifle butt, you can go low, that, that guy with the dog, and, and this happens to a lot of people, I don't know, I've talked to so many people, especially down here, there are all these dogs everywhere, right? Dogs and retirees, old people, with little dogs, and they're walking around, and they've all got them, and then the dogs get in a fight, blah, 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 blah. and the old person, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an old person, I don't know why I'm saying that, but the, person, the owner tries to separate them, gets lit up, gets bitten, they need stitches, and then the next day they're walking around, the next time they go out, and they're carrying a stick, carrying a stick, right? This is back to the advantage of the cane. I'm carrying my Joe, now I got my stick. That dog comes after my dog, gonna hit it. That's what they think, right? They do that. The neighbors have got the cameras, the security cameras on all the house. That guy's going to jail. That person's going to jail for beating a dog because he was nervous. He was afraid. Now, did he have a right to be afraid of that dog, to want to, because it hurt his dog and it gave him stitches? Yes. Human nature. But let's say instead he's smart. He understands it's his right to carry this. And this is a mobility tool. Now he's walking his little dog, and the other little dog, they get, they get together, and then instead of whacking him with that big old Joe and going to jail, he's got his cane, boom, boom, and then he protects his dog that way, because the other guy's not keeping his dog on the leash, or he's not controlling his dog, and then he says, look, I was just out walking with my cane, my hip hurt that day, and then I had to, I didn't have a choice, see my point? That's the advantage cane. I'm not advocating violence about anything either. This is just your right to protect yourself. It's your right to protect yourself. A self-defense cane gives you the advantage every single time. It's a force multiplier. You know how to move, move right, move left. Now all of a sudden, instead of trying to stop that dog with the sharp teeth and that strong power, think about a pit bull. He, oh, and he shakes all over and then you're the next statistic of the pit bull running around the neighborhood that was off the chain and had been abused and shreds somebody. Mauls them, that's the word, they get mauled. But now you've got your cane and that pit bull comes up. That lower angle, right, that hook for self-defense. So that, because it's your right to go home. That's a dog, that's a, a wild, um, vicious dog who is gonna hurt somebody else if they don't get you. 
And now all of a sudden, you're the hero, but you were just out walking with your cane. You walk around with a stick. All of a sudden, the PETA's coming after you, saying that you're just a bully looking around for a dog to smack with your stick. That's my point. All right, so advantage cane. The advantage of the, the Joe, just a quick recap, and then I'd like to know what you think, please put the comments below, is reach. It's longer than the cane. You know what? It's way longer than their knife. They got a knife, you don't know they have a knife, or they wanna punch you and knock you out, they wanna choke you, they wanna take your stuff. Create distance, see that? Now you have to get around my stick. And before you do, I'm gonna hit you with it. I'm gonna hit you this way. I'm gonna hit you this way. I'm gonna hit you this way. I'm gonna hit you this for self-defense. Hit you that way, right? Cross the face, take the jaw out. But that's the advantage of the Joe, is that you have that distance. It's also heavier. Because it's longer, it's heavier. I have that ability to strike with speed, power, balance, push, all the different strikes that you would with the Japanese Joe, once you learn how to use it, and I'll show you. And then, and like I said, that's also a walking stick. That's about the length. A good Joe comes up to about your armpit, by the way. This one's a little short, but it's all I have, so I train with it. Walking stick usually is about this, 54 inches. It's got that little lanyard on your wrist. You can get the tactical one, and they wrap it in that uh, 550 cord, or what do they call that stuff? What the civilians call paracord. Got the paracord in case you get stuck out in the woods, you gotta make a snare and eat a rabbit. Um, you can do that, by the way. You skin with your teeth if you don't have a blade. You walk. I think that's an amazing question. I've never thought about that in my understanding, and I could be a thousand percent wrong. If you want the definitive answer, I know for a fact that um, Keith Melton, Master Keith Melton over at Kane Masters, that's his company. He uh, took over the mantle from uh, one of the pioneers of the Kane. Can't think of his name. <laughs> or ask Gary Hernandez, but one of those two. They know for a fact how much of a curve it has to be, or if it has to be a curve. I think, from what I understand, from what I've read, it has to be this curve. Now, the one that comes out to the side, I don't know if that qualifies. And then the one, think about a, a, an Irish shillelagh, an Irish fighting stick, which is the big old knob. You know what that knob's for, right? I don't think those qualify. I think it has to be the curve. But I will find out for sure today, and the next time you see me, I will let you know. And if you find out before I do, please put it in the comment section below because I'm telling you right now, I don't know everything. And, you know, I, I only know what I know. That's all of us. I make lots of mistakes, but I keep going. That's what you have to do. You make mistakes, keep going, find the answer. So we'll find the answer. I'll find it. You'll find it. Let's put it below. But go to canemasters.com, all one word, canemasters.com. And um, somewhere on there, oh, I know what it is. He has a $10 and it's made, he told me this on the phone last week. They make them the same way they do a Florida driver's license, same machine. So that means it's durable. It's gonna, if you put it in your wallet, it'll be there for 30 years. And you pull it out and it gives you all your rights. And it says specifically, it answers that question. And if you go there now, you can look at the graphic and make it bigger and you can read it and it'll tell you. So it'll answer the question. If you wanna go there right now and then put the comments below, that would be really helpful for our community. This virtual dojo that we're all in but uh, whether it has to be a hook. And, and if you look at a fighting cane or a self-defense cane, they're always wider. And that's because of this, these moves and they do, some guys do uh, combat spinning, they go over the back of the hand and they do cool stuff and they're real fancy with it, which is super sweet. Yes, um, if you get the Carex canes or the other canes, and I know that some people get them, they soak a pry heat and then they pull them apart like they'll, they'll stick something in there, right? Like a rock, um, a weight, you could stick a, I've got some kettlebells that fit in there perfectly. And so once you get it, you get a little heat on there, think about a, uh, if you have it, a gun that removes paint, paint stripping gun, that applies heat, nice heat. Uh, put it in boiling water, put in boiling water, that'll loosen that up and then stick it in there if you wanna get the $10 cane, right? Put the kettlebell in there or, um, Maybe it's a big can of peas, like the family size peas or the big chunky tuna fish can. 
but you stick that in there and then when it cools and dries, it'll be this wide and then you have the perfect, if not, you're gonna have to adjust and your hand will be more sideways. I just adjust, I don't care. You can use them both ways. Self-defense cane of fighting cane is the one that you're gonna carry with you all the time. Bow staff stances, we can talk about that. Two things, on stances for bow staff or Joe. This is the Joe. The bow is the longer, the Joe is the medium size, and then the Han bow is the short one. And then there's that palm stick, the Yawara, that's a little bit wider than your palm. You hold that in there for self-defense. Um, stances, put your feet under your body. Step, make your body a little bit smaller. Either step forward or step back. If the stick's in this hand, I'll probably step back because I like to have it in the, create that distance. Or step forward and then you have this stance, right? Because if you do this, it's back there. So they're both right. But as far as like traditional karate stances, you can do the long front stance where your front knee bends and all your weight 70% uh, back foot, 30% front foot or somewhere in that region pushing your feet apart, you can do that in practice, but when we're talking about practical self-defense, you're just walking down the street, whether it's a Joe, a bow, a Hanbo, an Irish walking stick, you just get in that better position, put it between you and the threat, and don't worry about your feet so much. Your, your brain, your body knows what to do. If you wanna practice it, just think of shorter is better. Think about karate stances, right? Most karate stances, Kung Fu stances, Taekwondo, they're low like this what that does though is that drops your and that's good you do that in practice because that builds power in your legs that builds coordination improves posture all that stuff's true but when we're talking about pra practical self-defense i get a stutter when i say pra practical self-defense we talk about practical self-defense we want to be as fast on our feet as possible so if i lower think of your belly button as your center of gravity just down a little bit and in if i lower my center of gravity by stepping to the side in a horse riding stance, to the front in a front stance, to the back in a back stance. I know you can't see my feet, but think about going down. Anytime you need to move forward or back or to the side, get out of there, you will have to come up first and then move. What that means is if my feet are really wide, it lowers my center of gravity to go forward, I've got to come in and, and forward. I have to come in because I have to come up. If I'm in that long back stance, now you can learn to stay low and move in the traditional karate stance, and that works if the other guy's also doing a traditional karate stance. So, for example, you wake up, and by some magic, you have been transported to feudal Japan in 1826. I don't know if my dates are right, but let's say 200 years ago. 20 years ago, you wake up, and you're walking the countryside. You got a long hat, like you're some kind of ronin, and you come across another ronin, uh, just a masterless samurai, and he's carrying a sword. He's got the katana. Maybe he's got the longer katana. And you're walking with your, your Joe, right? And he gets, and he's wearing his hakama, hakama, his, his uh, looks like a skirt, but it's really pants. And he's got the kikogi, the, the longer shirt. And he looks like a samurai. He's got the patches, but he's a little worn because he was in the war. Get my point? Um, and then you're, you're, you're like the, the samurai who uses the staff. <laughs> and there was the, uh, the Musashi, the story about Musashi, the great samurai uh, ronin, the great uh, samurai warrior who never was defeated, except that one time by the guy with the Joe. That's going to be you, right? You got the Joe staff. And the story goes, when he first met the guy with the Joe, and I forget the name, if you remember, put it in the comment section below, he was carrying a bow. Or Raku Shunbo, I can't even say it. I, I try, I keep seeing this word. Um, it's like a Japanese word for the bow, okay? So he's got, this guy's carrying the long staff and he's fighting Musashi and it's unwieldy, which means it's hard to move. And it's running into the trees. And every time he tries to get Musashi, Musashi's up and gone because he's like a rabbit. And Musashi whips out his sword, his bow, he's probably using a boken, right? He's using his uh, wooden sword. Bam, they fight. And the guy with the long stick loses, but he doesn't die. He goes back and he's like thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. You're thinking about it. And you're like, well, what can I do? How do I need to change my training? I need to work on my lateral moves a little. I need to 
bob and weave a little. No, I need to cut down my stick. It's too long. It keeps running into stuff and it's unwieldy. It's hard to move. So it comes up with this idea. Well, if it's this long, then I can do this motion. I can spin. I can turn it into this stick. I can spin. All of a sudden, it's back into this one. I can bring it from here, sweep his legs. Boom. And then he does all that stuff with his Joe, which is really sweet. It's a real, it's, I don't know if it's a true story, but I know it's in that book, Musashi. And watch the movie, the old ones. Watch the old versions. There are about 10 different versions now, or maybe three. But if you go and you like Netflix or whatever, you find the old ones with Toshiro Mifune, M-I-F-U-N-E, Toshiro, T-O-S-H-I-R-O, his first name. And I don't remember if they're made by Akira Kurosawa, who made the uh, Seven Samurai, which became the cowboy movie, The Magnificent Seven. And he made all those cool Yojimbo, which means bodyguard, all the bodyguard movies, which became Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, Hang Em High, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Those were all based on those movies. What they did was they just took Clint Eastwood and instead of a sword, they gave him a gun and made him a cowboy instead of a ronin, which is, but it's the same story. Watch them and you'll see, oh, wow, that's exactly the same story. Um, and then Star Wars. Star Wars is based on The Fortress. Anybody ever seen The Fortress? Awesome movie. Fortress, Ran, R-A-N, or Ron. Um, great movies, epic battles, swords, right, staffs, bows, joes, sickle, and uh, ball, ball and chain, you know, all this cool whipping stuff. Um, the point is, <laughs> very effective, could be a walking stick, literally, you could use your walking stick, could be a seeing uh, a blind person's, uh, or a person who has affected sight, because they're not always completely blind, um, that white cane, and maybe you don't want to get out of the house because you have now have to use it. You've got diabetes, you've lost your eyesight. Now you're out there, and you're like, I don't want to leave the cane. I'm going to be a victim. They're going to see me as a same thing with the cane. I'm not going to start carrying a cane. They're going to see me as a victim. They're going to come after me. And you're right. The FBI statistics show that if you carry a cane, you become a bigger target. Target for those vile predators that are out there, the sick people who prey on people they think are weaker than them, usually in groups. So there's two or three of them, and they go after the one, but the difference is, they go after the one like this. It's just like bullies. If you ever, have ever had a bully, it's because when they came after you the first time, whether it's with their words or a look or a physical, you backed off, and that emboldened them, and then they keep coming. It's a weird psychological thing that happens. And bullies especially, but we can all be bullies. We know that, right? But as soon as you stand up for yourself, you say, hey, man, you don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You can't talk to me like that. You don't have to like me. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like who I am, where I come from, what I believe in, how I live my life. But you have no right, no right to talk to me like that. Get out of my face. And then if you've trained, you can put your hands up and you say, back up. If you happen to have a cane in your hand, they better back up, right? And then you defend yourself. So now you need a cane, let's say your mobility, your hips are bad, your knees are bad, you've had a surgery and you need it temporarily, you've had an accident or you uh, served our country, you lost a leg, you lost a limb, all of them, and now you need it to get around and you're afraid to go out of the house because you're like, you know, they're gonna, the people are just going to take advantage of me, they're going to hurt me, they're going to come after me. Not after you train, you prepare, and then you walk out and they, they see you, they start coming you're still standing tall because you know here you have some options. They get close. Hey, man, back up. What's going on? Why are you getting so close? See that? It's a pattern interrupt. They're used to coming after you or coming after people, and they, they wilt. They, sh they shrink. They cower. They freeze. Instead, you're like, <laughs> Why are you, what are you getting so close for? Back up. Don't get so close. I don't feel comfortable. Get out of my face. I'll defend myself. You see my big stick? Then you have some options. And the true thing, now you're getting out of the house more, your body's getting stronger, your confidence growing, you're making more friends, you're feeling good about life because life is good. And then it's all because of your cane. And whether you need it now, or maybe you're gonna need it later, or maybe you just live in an area where you don't feel safe all the time. I take this, this is always in the car when I get gas, because there's some areas around here, the cheapest gas, some of the worst neighborhoods where I get gas, specifically where I get gas. Guy was robbed, the guy who runs it, robbed, shot in the leg, because he didn't have any, he couldn't open the cash register. Two nights ago, and then like a week before, was also robbed. And um, that night, during the day, I get my gas there, 
My cane's sitting there. I get out. I just want to have an option of pumping the gas. Situation awareness, paying attention. Who's close? Who's coming in? Don't turn your back to them, right? You turn and you face them, you smile them, you look at them. You bring your cane up, you scratch your head. <laughs> you get my point? You have some options. And then that grows your confidence, that grows your ability. And then you practice. And you practice when you can. Great thing about the cane, different from the walking stick, is you can sit. You can practice all these same movements while you're sitting in a chair or a wheelchair, or a couch, or a bus station stop, or a train stop. You can't do it on the plane, obviously. From here, you can practice all while sitting. You can practice all while sitting. You can lie in your bed or lie on the floor and imagine someone's knocked you to the ground. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Yeah, where is that on here? That, that's just a, that's a get around the house. That's a regular walking cane, right? Get around the house, get outside, go to the grocery store, pick up your grocery. It's good to see you too, Wilson. We're just talking about the difference between the two most effective self-defense tools, one being the Joe, the Japanese Joe staff, the other, your everyday walking cane or the self-defense cane. And the question we had earlier was, I said that you have to have the hook in order for it to be legal for you to carry as a walking cane and not be questioned by anybody because it's your right if you live in this country, especially from the Americans with Disabilities Act. But the question was, does it have to have this shaped hook? I think that was the question. And we just had the answer. And what I basically, what I think I read was, it, if it looks like this and doesn't have a sword, if you can turn it and pull a sword out like you're some kind of uh, special agent British spy or something, I think it was a movie like that, right? That's not going to work. You're going to get in trouble for that. If it has a penetrate, I know this, if this is sharpened in a way that it would penetrate the body, the skin, the clothes, that's not legal. But it can still have a bit of a tip. It can have kind of a ch uh, chiseled or um, think of a chisel being the shape. It can have it like that. Yeah, good. Yeah, me too. I've got everything, but I don't have the sword inside the cane. Those, I see that and I know immediately that's a cheap cane uh, sword and, and any time, I can't use it anywhere. And two, if it is sharp, I'm going to cut myself when I play with it. And three, it's probably going to break because it's cheap metal um, for the price. If it wasn't made by like a Japanese sword maker, I'm not going to buy it. Um, or an American trained or a European, Canadian, whatever. If it's not somebody who knows what they're doing, I don't want it. Yeah, I like that. That's smart, right? That's perfect. But this is even smarter. Hey, man, how's it going? It's good to see you. Hey, you're getting a little too close. This is called the flinch block, right? With or without the cane. This is what it looks like with the cane. It still looks like you're trying to stop, right? If you're scratching your face, if the camera's watching you, and the cameras are always watching us now, they all, everybody has them on their cell phones or their, you know, they're on all the buildings around here. Houses have them, security cameras. Please come by, sweep through. They, uh, not just the police, lawyers come in and they get your, the copy of the, of the video so that they can see who was at fault. And even if they're a nasty, disgusting felon criminal who's been arrested 286 times, they're still gonna, they're gonna find, some lawyer's gonna find them and say, hey man, that guy's got some money. Um, you know, let's sue him. He shouldn't have beat you with his cane, even though you were coming after him with a knife and, he, and, you, were, and you, you just robbed the lady down the street. You shouldn't have gone after that other lady with the cane. It was, she had no right to split your skull open and break your wrist and break your kneecap. She had no right, you thug criminal punk. Let's sue her for everything she's got. And then they get the, a hold of those cameras, right? And the cameras show the story. And then the guy spins it in court and says to the jury, look, that old lady, she was walking out with her cane. She wanted to fight somebody. She was scratching her face right before she smacked him in the eye. Or they see this and you say, back up. I have every right to defend myself. What are you trying to do? Everybody who's watching this knows that this means stop. This means stop. This is your right to make them stop. Back up, back up. And then you had no choice and you went in court. And the thug doesn't get any more money and doesn't get a dollar because that disgusting lawyer, not all lawyers, I'm talking about the one who's trying to get your money for the thug, criminal. That's happening. You've seen these stories. They can't uh, say it was your fault. 
You, that's why I like this so much. Now, you put this hand between the knife and your face, or this between the knife and your face. It's the stick. So you create that distance. Back up, boom. You hit him. Bayonet strike, rifle butt, right? To the ribs, to the leg, to the side of the head. You hit this guy, and you're fighting, and then you have to get this one, and then the one behind you, and then the one in the front. You have all those options with the cane. Do you still have some of those options with this? Absolutely. This could be a room clearing tool, right? If you know how to use it. So my suggestion is, the final word, and I really wanna hear your opinions in the comment section below, but final word on which one? Both. I'm always a both kind of person. Both. Get both, train with both. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a, a Joe stick. If you have it, buy it. I put the links below where you can get them, both the can and the Joe. But if you don't wanna buy it, get a broomstick. Cut the broom off after you've used it. Now, or go to the, go to the store and get a, uh, a dowel rod, right? I've got the dowel rod over there that I picked up for five, four dollars and 99 cents from um, Lowe's. And then I've been rubbing it with mineral oil so that it gets more flexible and more durable. I sand it every once in a while, get the burrs off of it. And, and you can get that for less than five, six bucks. Start with that. And the same is true, that, that'll also get you ready for this. Get yourself a $10 cane from Amazon or from whatever. Don't make that your final uh, stopping point or go to the links below and get one of these training canes. You'll see super lightweight, reasonable price. And this thing I've had literally, I have hit it against every surface in this building multiple times, probably a thousand times now. I still have not broken it. Doesn't mean it won't break, but it's gonna last me. I'm gonna get true, you're gonna get massive value out of these weapons. Uh, the ones on the, and you might break the $9 cane and you have to buy it three times at 30 bucks. It's about what this costs. Then you've wasted your money. So maybe buy it once, you break it, and then you immediately move up. Or you start here and you have the perfect training cane and you move up to your everyday carry. My everyday carry is made out of oak and it has a teardrop shape, which means like a dull blade. Now, does that fit the rule that you just said? I know it does because um, it comes from cane masters. And if anybody knows the legal rights of carrying the cane and how to make a cane so that you won't get in trouble if you defend yourself with it, it's cane masters, canemasters.com. That's the link if you wanna go and see what the law says. That's also a link if you wanna go and get one of those, uh, one of their canes. But check the link below where it says, um, get martial arts weapons here. There are two canes on there. There's this one, the training one, which is less expensive. And then there's one, I think it's around hundred bucks. That's a Cane Masters cane. So Cane Masters has like 1 million options. I'm still confused. And I've been talking to Keith Melton who set up the options, right? and knows all about him. And he's given me so much information, still confused. I don't like, I don't like to go to certain restaurants because there are too many things on the, on the menu items. I don't want to pick, I, I give me uh, a red meat choice, a white meat choice, a uh, fish choice, and a vegetable choice, one of each. And let me pick, that's all, that's the most that my brain wants to invest in figuring out what to feed my machine, right? I don't like, I'm not a foodie. No one will ever accuse me of being a gourmet anything. But if you go to the website below, there's two choices, training cane, everyday carry, or street cane. That street cane is your everyday carry. That's the one I have in the car. That everyday carry cane is almost indestructible because they soak it in polymers for two days with oil. It gets in there and the polymers, it's a fancy word for plastics, that makes it almost indestructible and flexible at the same time. So you can get one of those and because it has that teardrop sh drop shape, when you hit the bone, it's gonna break it because you're concentrating more force on a smaller, uh, smaller line. And then it also has some features. To, you'll still be able to spin it, and you'll be able to keep it from coming out of your hand because it has some features up here. But none of the features, and it might have a little point here, none of those features are going to break the law and keep you from being able to use it as an everyday carry cane because, like I said, it comes from cane masters, and they've already they figured all that out for us, right? They know the law better than anybody else when it comes to cane self-defense. Carry the Joe, practice with it, get really good. This will build your power in your hands and your wrists. You're gonna learn how to move everything through space and time. Just generally be a better fighter with a weapon like this. 
a non-firearm weapon, right? And this whole video, uh, if it's not obvious by now, is about the best self-defense tool that's non-firearm. And if we talk about firearms, you know, there's a million options, right? A million options. And uh, if you're curious, my personal favorite uh, is not practical, but it's a 1911, 45, because you asked me one time, um, just for fun. But, but I don't carry it. I don't, this is what I carry every day. Let me finish with this. This is why. This is for self-defense cane. This is for you caners. And the caner nation, as somebody says, Joe Robena. That's it. I've been watching a lot of his videos. This guy's really smart. Um, anyway, Gary Hernandez, too. If you haven't gone over and seen Gary Hernandez, that guy is a craftsman. He, he, he creates new ways to use the cane. I love watching his videos. Anyway, Gary Hernandez, uh, Joe Robena down in Miami. They're, all three of us are in Florida. We should get together and fight each other. With our, no, not fight, but train with our canes, right? Um, anyway, I was joking, you know, fighting for fun, uh, for, so we all get better. Um, what was I saying about the cane? I just lost my train of thought. I don't know. <laughs> I lost it. All right. Put your comments in the comment section below. That happens to me every once in a while. This is the third, third video today. Uh, it's, 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 it's something to do with how you train with a cane and where you can carry it and what you can do with it. But there's so many options, there's so many ways that you can use this to strengthen your body, to get more mobility. This is one of the best self-defense things. Anybody remember what I was about to say before we go? Before we log off? No? Oh, one quick tip. Tape your tips on when you use your practice cane because that's gonna go flying across the room when you start to smash things with your cane. You want to be able to, to do that. I was trying to stall, remember what I was going to tell you. Because I know it's important. I know it's important. But you know what? That's why we make another one. We'll do that in the, tra the next training, which is going to be pretty quickly after this caning, or training. Um, so anyway, grab your cane, start training, grab a Joe, train with that, cross train, get better with everything, anything that you pick up. Oh, I know what it was. Thank you. Stalling works. So you're walking down the street. Let's say... You do believe that the firearm is the best and the only thing you should carry, because some people are like that. Some people, I, I know people like I used to go to the range, and you'd see these very obese, older, half-broken-down gentlemen who in their day were probably physically greatly fit, but they stopped moving, and they started making excuses. I'm getting old, so I can't do this. No, you're not. It's not age. It's lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. Eat better. Sleep more. Uh, quit doing your bad habits. Move your body even when you don't want to. Lean out. You're not going to be as fit as you were, or maybe you will. Maybe you'll be the fittest you are in your life at 76. And they, and they, and they will. But, but anyway, back to the story. They don't. So instead, they have this massive arsenal. They carry with them. And it's in the trunk, right? they got AR-15s, and they've got the, um, all the different uh, uh, handguns and firearms. And they, they appendix carry, and they right hand, and they back here, come out of their sock. They do all that crazy stuff, <laughs> or they just do one, and then they practice shooting paper, pew, 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 pew. shooting paper, pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. they do that over and over and over again, and they get really good at shooting paper. Um, and then they imagine in their head, and they say to themselves, self-defense is 90% mental, and I say, no, it's not, no, it's not. Self-defense is 90% physical. You should be able to throw a couple punches and move to the side, move to the side, move the other way, maybe throw a low kick, Maybe throw an elbow, a knee, someone goes to tackle you, know how to sprawl a little bit, drive the knee from there, basic stuff. You don't have to be Superman fit, but you should be a little bit fit and then grow that fitness and understand that self-defense, when it comes down to it, and you're in there for four or five minutes, and they're coming and there's two or three of them, and you still have your cane, or there's five of them, and a guy with a big chunk of concrete's coming up the back, and then you, you hit this guy when you know he's there, bam! You hit down to take his leg out, and then you this guy over here and this guy over here, that it's 90% physical. That's the point. But here is what happens in the mind of the guy who only believes the firearm is the only thing you should carry because nothing else, you know, I'm just going to shoot the guy. I'm just going to shoot. That's what they say. I'm just going to do that. And um, all of a sudden, they're in a, a gray situation area. Black and white is the guy smashing you in your face, his hands around your neck, he's stabbing you with it. That's black and white. You better defend yourself. You know, you're almost done. Black and white is, you're walking across the street 
with your wife. Three thugs start coming at you really fast, calling your names, yelling, hey man, what are you doing with me? You know, calling you, uh, derogatory comments. Black and white, get out of there if you can. If not, you better know how to defend yourself. Black and white is, you hear a noise, middle of the night, crash, the window, the door comes in, you hear people talking in your living room or in the kitchen, and they're talking about coming to get you. Black and white, self-defense, every day, you know, that's what you're talking about. But most of it's gray. Most of self-defense is gray. You're in a position, uh, uh, a felon, just out of prison, been there 30 years, lifelong criminal, knows how to close distance on you before you know it and take what a knife into your, you know, lacerate your guts, can't come back from that, or to uh, threaten you, hurt the people you're with. They know how to intimidate. They know how to do all that stuff. And what they do is they got to close that distance first. Now it's black, it's gray. You're not sure if that's what their intention is or that's who they are or that's where they're coming from or they're just, that's just, they, they're, they're having fun. They're talking, they're playing with each other. They're just loud people. <laughs> My neighbors are loud people. They like to talk late, loud, loud, late at night. They're just loud people. You get, you get a lot of that down here in South Florida, all the uh, New Englanders, no offense. Uh, New Yorkers, New Jersey, Boston, just loud people, right? Loud, aggressive talk. All that, but they don't mean anything. They're not coming after you. In that situation, the gray situation, you have this. Hey, how's it going? It's good to see you guys tonight. Just looks like you lift up your cane or lift it up like this, right? You still have all the same options to defend yourself, but you don't look like that other one, the firearm guy. You don't feel comfortable, gray situation. Uh, I don't know their intent. Are they, are they just loud talkers? Or are they trying to close distance, distract me, so this guy can come up and smash a bottle on the back of my head and hurt my family and take our stuff and take my life? I don't know. But if I go out like this, back up, back up. All the cameras come out. You're got, you, get, you get canceled. We know about cancel culture now. You get canceled. Everybody assumes you're just a bad person. And all it was is that you were nervous and you didn't have any other options because in your mind, you said, this is the only thing that works. But maybe this and this, right? Maybe this and this. And so you can say, hey, you know, whatever. You still have that same option. Um, anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Remember that when we talk about self-defense, cane self-defense, defending yourself with a cane, this gives you the option for the gray. There's so much gray in assaults and attacks where you're, you're walking and they catch you off guard, and they're right here. Before you know it, you've got to defend yourself. And, you know, and, and, and they're on top of you. That's not gray. That's black and white. Fight, right? They're across the street. They're, they're coming across. They're going to be crossing your path. They're loud talkers. They sound aggressive. They look aggressive. They, you know, uh, all the stereotypes. And you can't turn around and go back the other way. You're walking. You're closer. Hey, guys, how's it going? You know, and your hands are open. It just looks like you're talking or less threatening. Hey, it's good to see you guys. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then you still have your option. That's what we're talking about. Put the comments below. This is a discussion. I want to know what you think about what I said or what I didn't say or uh, whatever, you, whatever is important to you. What did I miss? Put that in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in a little bit.